Hey everybody, it's Brian from Carving is Fun, and we're gonna do a quick and easy little spoon here. This is more like a, a little feather spoon that I made. It's a fun, easy project. It's, we're gonna be using the Shaft three-piece tool set, and they send out these cool small blanks with it. You can make like a cool little teaspoon with it, or like a sugar spoon. You can also use this thing for like making regular spoons and whatnot, so there's just a little bit of a size difference is all. So we're gonna make a small, easy, Quick spoon, great for beginners. All you're gonna need is your three-piece set, your leather strop with the Stroffman compound on there. You're gonna want a pencil, your wood blank, and then some sandpaper to smooth it off. This is 150 grit. All right, so the first things first that we need to do is make sure that we have our blank and we write or we draw our little outline of the, the feather. And you can do it as you want. Now, if you want to make it as simple as possible, you don't necessarily have to do the feather if that seems intimidating to you. You can just do a, a regular stick handle. Just be mindful about how much room you have with this. So it's gonna be a really skinny handle. Then the wider design gives you more to hold on to. But yeah, so just what I like to do with this is on the spoon area, I like to drop it down just a little bit about halfway. And then we're just gonna make like a giant oval shape and then a little notch here, just for like the, the bottom of the spoon. So after we get it drawn on there, we're going to go ahead and remove the so the wood, I'm just gonna use this the detail knife for most of the work here, and then for the spoon, we're gonna use the hook knife. So first things first, we're gonna outline the shape. So we're gonna remove this top section, round it off here in this little chunk here. When doing it, I like to start from the furthest away because the way that the wood grain is going here, if you start right here, you run the risk of ripping off a whole bunch of wood and you might accidentally take off more than you, ne than you need. So just start off near the end and then work your way back. Uh, that way you don't accidentally break up a bunch of wood because it starts splitting on you. Work small and you get some pretty good results. And if you need to switch it up, you can also do a pairing cut as well. I find it works best when you're doing working in the front because sometimes you're working this direction, you can't see where that line is. Like from my angle, I can't see where this line is, but if I do it right here, I can see exactly where that line is and I know that I don't want to overshoot it so right there, I'm coming close to the line. So I know that I need to stop there and move to another spot. At this stage, we're just removing larger sections of wood. It does not need to be perfectly down to the line. Matter of fact, I recommend you leave wood above the line just in case it gives you some wiggle room there. All right, so I got the front shaved down. We're gonna start working on the back side now. And just taper the back side up a little bit. And then now we're gonna do this little crevice right here. And from this one, we're gonna be going from both directions in a curving motion. So we're basically carving a U. That's what we're wanting to do. We come in from one side, stop halfway, come in from the other side, and try to match it. Because if we try to go all the way through, we run the risk of removing too much wood because it grabs onto the, the wood grain and wood fibers, and it's just gonna take off an unnecessary amount of wood and you can't put, really put it back on too easily. So we got the side profile done. Now we need to start rounding the spoon. Point we're gonna start rounding the bottom of the spoon here. I like to do this before I start carving on the inside because then I know where I'm gonna stop and it prevents me from accidentally taking off too much wood when I'm going inside. So again, start from this end and work your way back. And since it's a round section here and we have some wood removed here, we're gonna cut from this part going this direction and from this part going this direction. So we're not gonna start carving around here and then going around because the wood grain is going this way. If we start doing it that direction, we might accidentally take a, like hook into the wood grain and remove like this entire chunk. And we don't want to do that. So just start from the top and round it up. You can bring it to about maybe just like almost an eighth of an inch to the, the top of it. Don't necessarily need to bring it all the way up there to the front, but you can if you want. And since we're gonna be cutting across the wood grain here, it's gonna be a bit difficult cutting in across this part right here. So smaller cuts are your friend here. Don't worry about making huge chunks. Small controlled cuts are what you wanna do. All right, now that I got the front rounded off, cutting this direction, I'm gonna start cutting this direction and making sure that I don't take off too much wood here. Remember, small controlled cuts. I may be cutting towards myself, but I'm not pulling with this arm. I'm literally taking it and squeezing my thumb on this so that it, it is pulling it towards me, but I am controlling every little cut and I am only making small cuts here. Now that we got most of it rounded, we're just gonna smooth it out a little bit so that it looks more like a rounded section underneath. Then we can start doing working with the hook knife. All right, cool. Now that I'm not worried about 
how rough that is. We're going to be fixing that up later with either smaller control cuts or with the sandpaper. But we're at the point where we can start working on the inside. Now for me, what I like to do is leave a small lip around the edge, mostly when we're using stuff with like the basswood because it's a bit softer. If I was using something like uh, I'm using with cherry, I can take it a little bit more to the edge because this is about two to three times as hard as the basswood. Noted that cherry is much harder to carve, but it's more durable. But the basswood is great for learning on and beginners and making cool little designs because it's easier to make these small intricate patterns. So what I like to do sometimes is just make a little indicator line all the way around the rim showing how far I want to go. Um, this doesn't have to be perfect I and mean, don't worry about it being there we can sand it off. You can see I'm, I left a little bit of an outline there and that's about where I'm going to put my edge and then go towards the middle. Now for me I like to go towards the middle and like go all the way around and instead of just like trying to scoop it all the way out like this. And keep in mind when you're actually doing the hook knife or uh, using the hook knife, be mindful of the wood grain going this direction. If we go like this, we'll pry up the wood grain like a, like a pile of straws and it'll want to rip off all the wood going this way. If we go across the wood grain, we're actually cutting across it and separating it. So it's less likely to split on us. So I like to go in just all the way around on that line and create an indentation. And then I start really working on it. And with these smaller spoons, you have to be careful about your hand placement because like smaller work areas are a bit harder to get a good grip on sometimes. So be careful, take smaller cuts if necessary. And be careful with this spot. Sometimes the hook knives, you might struggle against the wood fibers. Take it slow, smaller cuts, be patient with it. Keep in mind the inside does not have to be perfectly smooth because that's what we have the sandpaper for. And keep in mind I am mentally gauging at how deep I'm going so that I don't blow through the bottom. I think this is about good for me right here. Just use an edge indicated guess, you'll be good. Alright, I'm going to quickly strop up my detail knife again. Just to make sure I get it nice and sharp. And all I'm doing is just holding that edge, making sure that it's nice and sharp again. You don't need to apply a lot of pressure. If you want to know how to do this, I, I made a couple of videos on how to apply a and compound, as well as how to sharpen this three-piece kit as well. I'll have that link in the description for that video so you get an idea what to do. There you go. So, when I wanted to maximize the amount of surface space I have here, now I could make this a vertical up and down feather where it's like it's on an edge like this, but if you look at this one, you see that I actually had the feather just offset to the side. So what I did is I made this edge right here, the feather edge, and then this bottom edge right here, the other edge. So I cut this in at an angle on both sides so that it's kind of sitting at it at, a, at an angle right here. So you have your feather, but it's at, at an angle. And it kind of makes it easier to hold on to, especially if you're right-handed. You can hold on to it, and for me, it just naturally comes into the right position in my hand. So I'm going to take this. Basically, I'm going to kind of round this edge a little bit to the point where that becomes my new edge. So I'm kind of rounding this section off and like creating the, that edge right there. So for this, again, I don't want to start carving from here going all the way up because I'm going to hook on to, here, I'll give you an example. So if I, I'm going to start from right here. Imagine that I did this all the way back here. If I started from right here, you see all this wood that just like all of a sudden ripping off? This could actually end up going, instead of at this direction, it could go like uh, cut across this way and then all of a sudden this whole section, like including back here, could get ripped off. I don't want that. So. I like to start at this end and work my way back so that I don't accidentally do too much with the wood grain. And just take it slow. You don't have to have it all the way flat going down. Just work your way down. All right, now that I got that edge roughed out, I'm gonna match it to the bottom. And it can have a little bit of a bow to it, which is what I'm gonna leave. Because you can see this one is not, I don't know if you can see it in the video here. Yeah, I mean, in the video, you can kind of, or in the picture here, you can kind of see it's a little bit bowed. It's almost like an oval, like a very thin oval, which is what I, what I want because I want it, the, when you're looking at it, I want it to look like the edges are thinner, but it has some meat in the middle of it. So slightly rounded surface on this is desired. And since this part is kind of curved, I am going to do that little trick where I'm carving in two directions so that I don't accidentally start cutting across the, the wood grain and ripping off a bunch of wood I don't want. Now that that side's done, I'm going to do the same thing to the other side where this is one edge and then this is the other edge. So 
for looking at the spoon upside down. I didn't put the feather marks on this side. I just did it on this side, which you can do the same thing if you want, or you can apply it to both sides if you wanted to. It is at an angle, so, so you can see that the feather on this side is at a slight angle, so I need to make this one edge match this edge, and then I'm taking this corner down inwards. Basically, you're doing the same exact thing you just did to the other side. And this part, you can see that I accidentally took too much right there, so it's starting to rip off a whole bunch of the wood. So I'm going to continue this all the way across, but I can literally just like, you can see it's like I'm peeling off all this wood, and this section right here is essentially going to come off. I can fix it by moving the rest of the wood going this way, but instead, I'm going to go from this direction and try to smooth it out a little bit. That way I don't move too much wood accidentally. See, I can I smooth it out there, so I'm going to go ahead and just bring this down a little bit more. And then since this part is now kind of like an edge, I'm going to knock off that sharp peak on there, just make it more rounded. All right, from here, I'm going to be sanding it in a little bit, but I'll use my knife to remove a couple like flaky pieces, or I can even use my knife to like really start smoothing it down by really small, thin cuts like this. But that can be a little bit tedious. Um, instead, I'm going to use the sandpaper, but first I'm going to take it and just start knocking off any of the, like, the weird jagged edges. Like, like I don't like that funky bump right there that this has, so I'm going to kind of round it off a little bit. It's basically your you're moving any weird shapes before you start uh, doing the finishing work and adding details. Also, I don't like that little bump there, so I'm going to just round it off a little bit. Move it around. I think my feather's going to dip in right there, so I can probably fix that up a little bit. Looks a little bit better. Round this off so it's more like a, a rounded point. And I'm pretty much going to let the sandpaper do the rest of the work here. Again, you can take your knife and do like really small detailed cuts if you want, but the sandpaper is going to be really quick. And I'll show you a couple of quick little tricks here. One of the things that I've learned is I don't like to hold the sandpaper and sand it like this. That just puts strain on my fingers. If I have like a soft surface, like this is like kind of a soft mat, I'll just put this on there and just start sanding like that. Because then when you're pushing into it, it, ha it can create a natural curve. So it's not a super flat surface. So this allows you to impart a nice organic look to uh, like a curvature. You can see this quickly removing some of that. And you can really see it's like it removed a whole bunch of those scalloped cuts in there and you're starting to get some nice round surface to it. So I'm going to do that the rest of it here. I'm going to be a little bit more off camera so I can have a little bit more dexterity. I like to do it at the edge of my, my table so I can get my knuckles from being bashed up here. Bottom of the spoon is good. Work on the top here and then the sides and then I'll show you what I do for the middle. All right, now that I got it Mostly sanded there. I'm going to smooth off these edges a little bit more so it looks more like a feather. Alrighty. Now that we got that done there, we got to get the inside. And this is going to be a little bit tedious and whatnot. Sometimes there's going to be, I'm going to have like some weird chunks like, like right there. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect on the inside, but you're definitely going to want to use your thumb in there. There we go. And it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. You can take more time and sand it down a little bit more. It doesn't take too much to get in there. The basket's pretty easy and nice and soft to work with. But we're going to start working on the feather here. Now, keep in mind, feathers aren't exactly equally proportional where one side has the same exact as the other. The center part of the feather is usually kind of offset a little bit, and then you got the, I think what, the barbs are going out towards the side. And then we can take some notches out here so that it looks more like the barbs are separating uh, on the feather. That way it looks less like a leaf. But yeah, so we're going to draw the line to the vein first. There's no science to it, just, just make it kind of like a, an arch. If you keep your drawing hand planted like your wrist on the table, another one, other hand steady, you can create like a nice natural arc. And then from there you can just start creating like lines or notches. I don't think you need, necessarily need to draw the well, each of the feather lines, but you can if you want. From here what I'm going to do is create like a little gonna be like a V cut going in so the blade comes in one direction and cuts across and then the blade comes in again in the other direction and it removes like a little V-shaped chunk of wood. So that's I found the easiest way to create that little detail. And take this slow. You're gonna be cutting across the, the wood grains which will want to direct your blade for you. 
just a slow controlled cut. And you don't have to be directly on the line. The line is just a guide. Where you feel natural, let the, the blade take you. So I went in from one direction, I was going from the other direction. And then it should start just separating like that if you hit the, the V correctly. And you create your little vein. All this is really doing is just adding detail. You don't have to be super precise. And then from here is going to be the, the more tedious part. I personally like to come in at small angles. I'll do all the cuts to go in this direction and then I'll cut in going the opposite direction. Very similar to how I did this vein. We're going to speed up this spot here. I'm going to show you what I do for the first couple. Essentially all I'm doing is just making a, a cut and going down like this all the way across. You can make as many or as few as you want. And then we're going to come in from the opposite direction. As I came in from this direction at, for the V, now I'm going to come in from this direction for the opposing V and it opens up that, that design a little bit more. You don't have to be exactly precise or have it equal all the way across. You can start off wider at the bottom and then it keep, goes thinner at the top. Completely your call. Just let your blade take you. Perfection is not necessary here. I mean, feathers aren't perfect to begin with. And I think that's what makes them, each one of them unique and beautiful. All right, and then you got one side done. You can see it took a little bit more of a chunk off right there. That's perfectly fine. Doesn't matter. You can probably smooth it out. Let's see if I can here. Very shallow cuts. Yeah, there you go. I fixed that. <laughs> Not a problem. And then now we're going to do the same thing going the opposite side. And then we're going to create those little notches in there. So again, small controlled cuts. You don't have to make it line up exactly to this side. I did it on my other one. Just let the blade do the work for you and wherever it may land, that's where the cut's going to be. And then again, coming at the opposite angle and you're going to remove some of that wood there. All right, move all the little pieces there and you got a nice little feather looking design. Now to create the notches in there, take it slow because we're going to be going up into it. You can follow one of the barbs here that you got. I mean, really all you're doing is creating like a little wedge into it. So it looks like there's separation. I recommend no more than three and make them different sizes, if anything. And try to make it so that one side is following the curve of the barbs on there. So just create like a little, basically you're doing stop cuts into a little V cut. It's, it's what it is. It's a very small controlled stop cut. You might get some separation in the wood right there. It's fine. If you do get a little separation in the wood, like how it is separating right there, you can just go and mop it off. You'll be fine. So yeah, you got a little bit of a separation right there. Do the same thing to the other one over here. And that pretty much will finish up your little project there. Just clean it up a little bit. Get some of the extra fluff off. If you want to get rid of some of the pencil marks, the easiest thing to do is just hit it lightly. I say lightly with some sandpaper. Otherwise you're going to remove a lot of your details you made on there. And there you go. You can add the same patterns to the other side if you want, but for the purpose of the video, we're just going to do the one side. So now you have little feather spoons, which are really fun and cute. Great for like little sugar spoons and whatnot. I think it'd be a great addition to any little tea set or something like that for if you're trying to create something like that. Finish it off if you want to use it with some mineral oil. That's what you usually use, especially for like cutting boards or other spoons. Like it's, that's what I finish all my soup spoons and uh, wooden spoons with is mineral oil. Reapply as necessary. There are other sealants you can put on there as well. Be mindful you read the information about it, make sure it's food safe. Not many of them are, so just keep that in mind. All right, and that should do it. And that's basically using your little shaft three piece tool set to make a cool little spoon. Something that you can use all the time. It's a great little utility uh, item there and something to show off to your friends and family. But yeah. That's how you, you're going to want to use this. You can use your Sloyd knife as well too, but since it's such a smaller tool set, I found that the detail knife does jobs. If you do larger spoons like this one, yeah, your Sloyd knife is going to be better for removing a lot more of the, the wood stock. I almost put my spoon back in the tool kit there. But yeah, I'll also have some other videos for how to use your shaft tools, as well as a sharpening video for how to sharpen these three piece sets. I'll have them in the description below. And yeah, thanks for watching everyone. Hope you have yourself a great day.